Hey, what's up everyone? This is John with Web Dev for you, here to help you build beautiful websites without code in Webflow. Uh, so recently I connected with Zach Steele Eklund from Studio VOR and their uh, creative studio based in London. And this is their dribble page here. So they designed these really interesting and unique uh, website and app concepts, and they have really beautiful illustrations. Um, so when I saw this dribble page, I had the idea of building one of these website concepts in Webflow uh, to showcase the power of Webflow and to build a really cool site uh, in Webflow. So I reached out to Zach and I asked him if I could use one of these design concepts and make it into an actual website. So yeah, he was kind enough to send me the assets for one of these projects. Um, I recommend just going through the D Dribble page. Um, they just have really great uh, designs and uh, animations here. Um, I believe they create the animations in After Effects and and things like that. But but yeah, the, the one he sent was this one here. Uh, it's called Cray. And it has some really nice um, animation to it. There's a nice parallax effect at the beginning. Um, there's some really nice illustration here with the bears and the mountains. And here, I'll open this here so we can see it a bit better. Um, so yeah, we have this parallax effect where the bears go up a bit quicker than the background. Um, then we get to the second section and we have these cards. Um, and then, yeah, these cards that scale in. And then in the third section, we have this slider here that animates in, kind of pops out. And then you, you have a nice slider here. All right, so, so yeah, I went ahead and built this in Webflow. It was a lot of fun building it. Um, so here's the website in Webflow. And if I scroll down, we can see we have that nice parallax effect. And then we have the second section. We hover over the cards. They pop in and we have we have a slider so you can add more cards. And then we have the third section with the slider here. So I can go to different slides and when you scale to this section, it pops in. So it has a nice animation to it. And click explore photo, it opens a light box so you can see the image uh, a bit larger. And yeah, so this is the website we'll be building today. Uh, it is just the desktop version, uh, but it's a lot of fun to build. And uh, yeah, I'll showcase how to build this in Webflow. Um, so yeah, shout outs to Zach for sending the assets and um, allowing me to build such a cool, cool website in, uh, in Webflow. So one thing I'll mention really quick before we get started, um, I am gonna move a bit quick through this tutorial just to save a bit of time. So I'm, it's gonna be kind of like a narration of what I'm doing. I'm not gonna explain every little detail. Um, if you are new to Webflow, I recommend, recommend checking out the Webflow University. Um, they cover the basics of how to use Webflow. So um, yeah, if you're new to Webflow, just check out the university or check out a few of my earlier uh, YouTube videos um, there. Okay, so we can get started. Um, I have the, the website here. This is the actual website built in Webflow. And I'll be referencing this build uh, quite a bit because I don't remember every little detail that I did. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like in Webflow. And looks good. So I have a blank project here. So we'll start with the blank project. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is add a section. So I'll hit Command K, add a section and I'll call this section one. So this is where I'm gonna put the, the illustrations at the beginning and uh, yeah, to create that parallax effect. Uh, the minimum height, I'm gonna set it to 100 VH, so it spans the full height of the viewport within the browser and it'll be the full width as well. Okay, I'm gonna set the position to relative because we're gonna have fixed and absolute position divs inside of this section. So I want them to be relative to section one and I'll go ahead and add the sky, the mountains, and the bears. So I've already added the assets as well, something I didn't quite mention, but these are the assets um, from, uh, yeah, that Zach sent from Studio VOR. So we have, you know, the different, uh, the mountains, the sky, the bears, uh, these images here, and the images for the cards. Um, so one thing, uh, you know, I didn't go through adding these assets, so you just drag and drop in here. Uh, and you also wanna make sure that um, your images are a good file size. You don't want your images to be too large, but um, but yeah, these are the images here and we'll be using those. So we have section one, I'll hit command K, add a div block. And the first thing we'll add is the sky. So I'll type in, give the class name sky. I'll set it to a position of fixed 
and full. Okay, so it fills the entire section one. Then I'll go down to background, add a background, choose an image, and I'll choose the sky. I'll set it to cover, so it covers that entire div. Position it in the center, and I don't need it to be tiled, so I'll say don't tile. Okay, so we have the sky, looks good. Now I'll uh, select section one, hit command K, add another div block. I'll call this mountains for the mountains. And for this, we'll give it a position of fixed as well. And we'll give it a, yeah, fixed and full. So it fills the entire section. And I'll give it a background image, choose image. And I'll choose the mountains here. I'll say cover, position it in the center. And I don't need it to be tiled. And the last thing we'll do is add the bears. So I'll hit Command K, add a div block. And I'll say bears for the class name. And for this, I'm going to set it to a position of absolute and not fixed because I want the bears to scroll with the rest of the website. So I'll say absolute and I'll say full. I'll go down to background, add a background image, choose image, and I'll select the bears here, set it to cover, and I'll position it at the bottom. So no matter what the width of the, the screen, the bears will always stay at the bottom and I don't need it to be tiled. Uh, so just like that, we created the first scene. Um, now we can add the nav bar. So I'm going to add the nav bar within the body and not the section. So I'm going to hit Command K and add a nav bar. Um, I do want it to be above the the uh, the header image here, so I'll place it at the top. And for the uh, position, I'm going to set it to fixed, and I'm going to set it to uh, top. So it's fixed at the top, right? So if we if the site scrolls, this stays at the top and I'll just call this nav bar. All right, so we have the nav bar, and the nav bar is comprised of a container, uh, the brand, the nav menu, and the menu button. We're not gonna use the menu button because we're not gonna design for tablet and mobile, but we are gonna give um, this container, we'll give it a class name, so I'm gonna say nav container. I am gonna give it a max width of 1140 pixels in width, 1140. And uh, this just ensures that if you know the desktop screen is really large, that the content will be nicely in the middle and the user will be able to read it. And this will be good even for certain tablets. <clears throat> so it'll be good for larger screens, larger desktop and laptop screens to smaller desktop and laptop screens to some tablets. The user will still be able um, to view the content down the middle. Okay, so we set a max width of 1140. And yeah, looks good. So we have the menu. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is add the um, the text here. I'll just uh, let's look at the attachment so we can see the image too. So we'll add this gravity text, and I'm gonna use the font Merryweather for this. So I'm gonna hit Command K. I'm gonna add a text block, and um, let's see here. So we have the brand. And okay, so one thing with the brand, and actually, yeah, for this entire nav container, I want to give it a, a display setting of flex and um, yeah, horizontal align stretch and justify start. So this allows me, this makes the brand the same height as the nav container. So then I can give this brand div block or link block a display setting of flex and center it. Uh, align center and justify center, so, so this text is in the center. Then I can double click and I'll say Merry Weather. Okay, so we have Merry Weather. No, not Merry Weather. Uh, gravity is the name. And we want to style it, so I'm going to call this, give it a class name of Logo Text. And I'm going to go to Typography. I'll say uh, Merry Weather. And it is white, so I'll change the color to white. And let's see the, the size here. Um, so it's a font size of 22 and the letter spacing of two. Okay, so we'll set the, the size to 22. The height, we'll set it to one and we'll give it a letter spacing of two. So with line height, you can, you can either work in pixels or you can just not give it any, um, any unit and it's kind of like percentage. When you don't give it a unit and you say one, it's almost like saying 100%, so it's, or 22 pixels. But I like working with these units because, you know, I could say like 1.5, so I know it's like one and a half. Okay, so, uh, yeah, line height of one, 
And there we go. So with this brand here, uh, this brand link, blo link block, I'm gonna set the sizing to uh, grow if possible. And for the brand, I'm also gonna change the justify for the flex to start so it stays on the left. And all this does is that it pushes the, the nav items here to the right. Um, so we have, yeah, the, the brand here on the left and the nav menu items on the right. So I need five menu items, so I'm gonna hit Command-C to copy the nav link, and I'll paste. So we have five there. And then we have here, we'll look at the image. We have location, itinerary, schedule, and availability, and login. So let's see. So I'll just type that in, itinerary. Did I spell that right? Here, I'll just reference this one. Itinerary, okay. Oh, no, location, itinerary, location, itinerary, uh, I think this is schedule, and availability. Okay, availability, and this is login. Okay, so we have our menu items, and let's go into Webflow, into the, the reference here. So for this, um, it is using Nubo Grotesque 65. So yeah, these are the fonts that Zach sent, the ones that they used for the project. So I'll go back in here and I'll give it the uh, Nubo Grotesque font here, 14. And um, yeah, we'll just say one here for the line height. All right, we'll leave it at 20, 20 is fine. And then we'll set the color to white. And yeah, that's it. So I'll give this the class name nav item. And we'll just give all of these the class name nav item. So they become, they have that styling, nav item. <clears throat> nav item. And then we have this login button that has a bit of different styling to it. So the login button, instead of having a padding of, um, yeah, all of these have a padding of 20. If we go to the spacing, they have a padding of 20, uh, except the login button. So it's a bit bigger and it has different margin to it. Um, and also the nav items have 40 pixel margin on the right. So we'll just select the nav item and say 40 pixels margin from the right. We'll select the login. We'll, we'll give it a combo class so we can apply its own styling to it. So we'll say button and we'll remove the 40 from the right. We'll add 20 pixels to the left, so it's a little bit, a little bit more distance between these nav items and the login button. And then for the padding, I'm going to add 40 pixels of padding to the left and the right, so the button's a bit lo uh, larger. Then I'll go down to borders, give it a solid border, and I'll make the border white. Okay, so there we have the login button. Um, so now I'll go ahead and re remove this um, this gray background from the nav bar, right? Because it doesn't have a background. So select the nav bar, and I'll just say transparent here for, for the nav bar. And looks good. And also for the nav bar, we'll give it um, a top margin of like 20 pixels, so it's not so close to the top of the browser there. All right, so, so far so good. We have the menu, we have the, the illustration. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is add the um, this cray text and this text here and this button. Um, there are some hover states here, um, and we'll do that after we design the section. We'll just add the little details like the hover states. Um, yeah, so I'll select uh, section one, and I'll hit Command K, and I'll add a div block. And for section one, I'm going to go ahead and give it a display setting of flex, uh, align, center, and justify start. Um, so now this div block is here to the left. And I'm going to give it the uh, class name container. So this is going to be the container. Um, and it's also going to be a max width of 1140 because it's, um, yeah, it has content in it. And so, and to, to see it stretch across the 1140 pixels, we'll give it a width of 100%. And then for the spacing, I'm going to set the, uh, the spacing to auto, the left and right. So it centers this uh, container. And looks good. So this is where we're gonna place the heading, that paragraph, and the button. So in the container, I'll hit Command K, I'll add a heading, and I'll call this uh, H1 heading. 
All right, and also for the container, I'm going to set it to a position of relative, so it comes to the front. And I'll double click in the heading, and I'll type in Cray. And for this, um, the font is Alpha Headline Pro. That's also another font that Zach sent over um, that they use in the project. And the font size, I believe, is 220. The color is white. And we'll just make the line height one and remove the unit. Okay, and there is an asterisk as well. So we'll add the asterisk. And let me see how that looks here in the, yeah, so they have this little asterisk asterisk here. Um, so to change the size of this asterisk, asterisk we'll just select it. Um, I'll wrap with the span and then I'll select it and I'll give it the class name asterisk. And for this, I'll just make the, the font size 140 and the weight, I'll set it to normal. And yeah, I think that's all we have to do there. And then for the position, I'll set it to relative and also set it to inline block. So we can change the margin to it, or actually we'll just use relative and just move it with the relative position. Say about negative 80. And yeah, that looks good. Um, we have the heading. So the next thing I'll do is I'll select the container, hit command K, and I'll add a paragraph. And for this paragraph, we'll just call it uh, S, S1 paragraph or section one paragraph. And let's see here what I did. So um, let me bring the container to the front. Uh, yeah, to 99. Okay, so for this, uh, yeah, I'll just copy this text here. Join us for a week of hiking, team bonding, and digital detoxing this month, one time only in Kam Kamchatka. Okay, and I'll paste that in there. And the font, let's see. So we're using for this, using Nubo Grotesque 45, size of 16, and a line height of 23. So let's go ahead and add that. So Nubo Grotesque 65, size of 16. And again, I'm gonna remove the unit, and instead of 23, I'm gonna say like something like 1.4 for the line height, maybe 1.5. And the color is white, and looks good. And I'm gonna set it to to inline block, or actually no, rather than that, I'm gonna select the container and give it a display setting of flex, vertical, and align start. Perfect, yeah, so that these div blocks don't expand the full width of the container. Okay, so looks good. Then the last thing we need to do is add that, that button. So for this, I'm gonna add a link block. And the reason I'm adding a link block and not a button is because I wanna add, like, uh, if we notice here, there's the text and this arrow. So I wanna put it in the link block so I can add those elements. So I'll select the link block and um, I'll add a text block inside of here. And I'll just say adventure. Okay, so we have that. And let's see here what I did. So we have adventure. Okay, and I added some padding to um, to the link block. So yeah, I'll select the link block. Let's give it the uh, the class name adventure button. And we'll add 15 pixels of padding from the top and 20 pixels of padding from the left and the right. Okay, I think that's what I did here. Mm -hmm. Looks good. And so for this adventure text, I'll just let's say adventure text. And let's see, the font is Nuburgo Test 65, uh, size of 18, and it has this color here. Um, also the link block has a background color of white, so we'll just set it to white. Okay, then we have this text here, and also the link block, let's go down to typography and remove the line decoration so we don't have that underline. So I'll select adventure text. We'll select Nubo Grotesque uh, 65, set the size to 18, line height of one, and remove the unit. And then for the color, I'll just paste in that color that we had, and perfect. So for the adventure button, I'm gonna set a display setting of flex, horizontal, um, justify start, and align stretch, so that's perfect. So now I'm gonna add another div block, and uh, let's see here. 
do I want to add an image or a div block? Let's see. Yeah, we'll add a div block. Or actually, no, this was actually really interesting what I did here. Okay, yeah. So I created an arrow with CSS. So let's uh, let me show you how to do that. So I'll hit Command K, add a div block, and we'll call this uh, arrow right. And let me just kind of uh, see how I did this. Okay, width and height, 15, 15, and okay, got it. All right, so to make an arrow with CSS, um, we add a div block, we make it a width and height of 15 by 15, um, and then we give it a background color. Oh no, no background color. We go to border and we'll give it a border on the top left and right. So I go to borders, give it a solid border. I'll say 10 and we'll make it uh, this color here. And so we'll say 10 and 10. Okay, so I'm missing a step here. So let's see the arrow. Do, do. Okay, no, never mind. Um, so the top and the left, yeah, the bottom and the top are transparent uh, for the border color. We'll set it to transparent, and the bottom is transparent and perfect. So as you can see, now we have an arrow just like that. Um, so yeah, just to backtrack, we gave it a specific width and height, and then uh, the we gave it a border on the top, left, and uh, bottom of 10. And then we gave the top and the bottom border a transparent color, and the left border um, has the color here. So let me just give it that color. Um, yeah, so we have a little arrow. And let's see, I gave it some margin, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so we'll give it a margin of 40 from the left to give it some spacing from the adventure text. And looks good. All right, so uh, yeah, so far so good. Uh, let me give some top margin to this button so it's not so close. And let me look at the margin here. So uh, 120, negative 20, and 10. Okay, so we're just gonna move everything down a bit. So I could just actually just move this container down. So I'll just say like one, 120. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Might be a little bit too close to the bottom, but we'll just leave it like that for now. And yeah, let me give this a margin of negative 20, or maybe here, I'll just do zero for that. And we'll just say negative 10 and looks good. I'm happy with that spacing. Um, I do want this create text. So let me take a look here. Yeah, so this create text, because of the way uh, the font is set up, it creates some spacing here on the left. So I'm just gonna add a, a margin of like negative 20 so that this K lines up with this gravity and lines up with um, this text here as well and the button, right? So we're just working with alignment. If you if you were to like draw a line, you'd see like a line from this G down to the K, down to the left of these elements. All right, so yeah, I think we're done with section one. Um, hopefully you're still following along. Like I said, I'm, I'm moving a bit quick because uh, there is a lot of things I want to cover uh, in this tutorial. So we've added everything. If I preview, it looks really good. Uh, we are going to add the effect in just a second, the parallax effect. Uh, but first, let's add section two. So I'm going to select the body, hit Command K, and I'm going to add section to, uh, a section, yeah. And I'm going to call this section two. And I'm gonna set the minimum height to 100 VH, so it spans the full height of the viewport. And I'm gonna give it a color. And actually section two has a gradient. So if I select section two, um, and I go down here, it has a linear gradient, and it starts here. So I'm just gonna copy it. Um, the angle is 180 degrees. So I'll go into here, select section two, go into the backgrounds, and I'll add a gradient here. So we'll start here, paste that first color, and um, we'll select here, and let me just grab the second color. There we go. So when I was building this, I used Sketch, and I just sampled the colors uh, from, from the image. I downloaded the image and just sampled the colors in Sketch, so that's why 
um, I'm saving a bit of time here because I already have the colors um, in the sample. So let me set a position of relative, yeah, a relative so it comes to the front. When you set the element to relative, it, fire, it follows the hierarchy here in the navigator. So the lower the element is, the further in front it will be, unless you give it a specific Z index. Um, beautiful, so as you can see, we have this nice gradient background for section two. It goes from darker to lighter, um, here from the top to the bottom, and looks good. Uh, so now that we have some scrolling to the site, we can create this parallax effect with the, yeah, and if I preview, like, notice that the bears move, but the background doesn't move. And that's because the mountains and the sky are set to fixed, and the bears are set to absolute. So we do want a little bit of movement to the mountains and the sky. So we can go ahead and add that parallax effect. So to do that, I'm going to go to interactions here in Webflow. It's going to be a page uh, a page trigger because uh, it applies to the entire page. So I'll click the plus and I'll say while page is scrolling, we're going to uh, play scroll animation. We're going to add a new scroll animation and I'm going to say uh, header up. Um, or I'll just say maybe like pair or yeah, just header up. That's fine. All right. So the things I want to move is um, the mountains, yeah, the sky, the mountains, and the container. So we'll start with the sky. So I'll select the sky here in the navigator, click the plus. I'm gonna say at 0%, I'm gonna say move. And on the Y axis, we're gonna set it to zero. So it starts at zero. And then Webflow automatically creates uh, a, a timed action at 100%. So what happens when the site finishes scrolling? So at 100%, we're gonna move it negative 200 pixels. So it's gonna move slightly up. Um, you might not even notice it that much, um, but but yeah. And when we add more elements to the site, it'll move less because there's more um, real estate and you know, zero to 100% becomes larger. Um, so yeah, we just wanna move it negative 200%. The mountains, I'm gonna use a percentage. So select the mountains here in the navigator. I'm gonna say move. I'm gonna start it at 0% on the Y and I'll just start it with the sky. And then at 100%, we're gonna move it negative 130%. And I'll just drop it down here with the sky. And so we're moving so we can see that the mountains are moving up a bit. And I'm gonna add section three so we have a bit more. So I'm gonna hit Command K, add a section. And I'm gonna say section three. And I'm gonna give it a minim minimum height of 100 VH. So this adds more scrolling, so we have a, a bit better of an idea of how the parallax effect will will happen. So by adding more scroll space to the site, the elements don't move as much because now there's more yeah scroll space. So as I move, the mountains move um, a bit quicker than the site, um, and the bears the the sky kind of stays in place, and we have this nice parallax effect. All right, looks good, and we can play with that to get it really perfect. But for now, you know I'm just kind of just going from memory, the values that I added. Uh, for the container here, for um, this container, I want it to move down as the bears are moving up. So I'll say it, set a move interaction. I'll start at zero on the Y, start it with the sky and the mountains, and then at 100%, we'll move it down. I wanna move it down 500 pixels, okay? And these values, yeah, I did play with this for a while, and I got these values that I liked, um, but, you know, these are not the only values. So yeah, as you can see, as we scroll up, the bears move up, the cray text moves down a little bit, and perfect. I really like that. So one thing as I was building this, um, the bears, let me go in here, uh, the bears are behind this text. In the concept, if I go, um, here, let me just, well, I don't have it here anymore, but um, yeah, in the concept, let me see here if I can grab it. I'll just use GIF Scrubber again. Um, just want to kind of showcase this. Yeah, if we move it, notice that the cray text is behind the bears. Um, this looks really good in the concept, and I'm actually going to recreate that here. But one thing to note is that when you put this this container behind the bears, you don't have access to the adventure button. Uh, for this these uh, this demonstration, I want to put the bears in front just because it looks cooler. But um, you might just want to be aware of that because you want the user to be able to click on this button. 
So now the bears are in front and we can see the text goes behind, which is a really cool effect. It really gives uh, gives this um, header some depth, right? Like it's, you know, the text is in between the bears and the mountains. I really like that. All right, cool. So we're done with that header. So now let's move on to the cards. We're moving on to section two. For section two, uh, we have this top wrapper. It has choose your adventure and these elements here on the right. So I'll go ahead and let me see here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and um, click on section two. So now we'll start with section two. And the first thing I want to do is add the container. So I'll hit command K, add a div block and I'll call this container, and it's nice, uh, nicely in the center there. And now we can add the heading. So here for section two, we have this uh, heading and this text here on the right and some nice underlines. So I'll go ahead and add uh, that information. And so that's all in a top wrapper. So yeah, we have this top wrapper. So I'll hit uh, Command K and add a div block, and I'll say top wrapper. All right, looks good. And uh, for this container, because I want this top wrapper to stretch the width of the container, I'm going to select the container, give it a combo class of two, so it doesn't affect this container up here. And for the display setting, I'm going to say align stretch. So anything inside of it will stretch within the container, the width of the container. So we have the top wrapper. And for this, I'm going to give it a display setting of flex, um, align uh, stretch, and justify space between so that the header goes on the left and that text goes on the right. So now I'll add an H2 heading. So I'll add a heading in the top wrapper. I'll say H2. Um, I could give this a class like we did for the H1, or I can select all H2 headings and style the H2 heading. And anytime I add an H2 heading, it'll give it the style. So now I'll go to typography. Uh, the typography is Alpha Headline Pro. The font size is 42, and the line height is 1.2, and I'll remove the unit. The color is white. All right, perfect. So now I'll say choose your adventure. And also for the, the font weight, I'm gonna set it to normal, so it's not as bold. All right, so that looks good. Choose your adventure, and then we have this here on the right, it says range of activities. And we have this line here as well. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and add that. So let's see. Yeah, it's absolute. Okay, so let's add the line. So in the top wrapper, I'll hit Command K, add a div block. I'll just call it line decoration. And we'll give it a width. I think it's a width of 200 and a, a height of two. And the background color is white. And perfect. Looks good. I think it's 200 or 300. I, no, it looks like 300. For the width of this line, it's 300. Okay. And we'll say, where is it? 300. All right, perfect. And now, yeah, for this, I also wanna set it to a position of absolute and place it in the top right, okay? And I also wanna give the top wrapper a position of relative, so this line is relative to it. All right, so the next thing I'll do, uh, let's see, is add this text here that says 01 dash range of activities. So yeah, let's go in here. Let's, oh yeah, 01 range of activities. So let's go hit Command K, I'll add a text block. Add it in there, I'll just type in 01 space dash range of activities. Okay, and for this, the text is uh, new bow grotesque 45, uh, font weight normal, and uh, size of 15 pixels. So we'll just select it. We'll call this uh, ROA text, so range of activities text. And we'll say new bow grotesque, make it white. And yeah, that looks good, 14. Yeah, we'll just change the line height to one. And uh, yeah, it's looking looking good. Okay, range of activities, 15, okay. And yeah, new, uh, it's Nubo Grotesque 45. Yeah, that's why it looked a little bit bolder. Uh, Nubo Grotesque uh, 45, okay. And 15. 
Okay, and also for the top wrapper, I'm gonna set the align to top. Okay, that's a bit better. And give it a margin of 20 for the range of activities. And it looks good. And then we notice that this one here is uh, red. So we'll just select it, go back into here, so, uh, select the 01, get, uh, wrap it in a span, and I'll just say ROA number. So range of activities number, and then we'll just change the color to that red. Okay, uh, yeah, it's looking looking good and perfect. So that's done there. And let me see if the padding for the heading, if it's the same. Okay, yeah, it will remove the margin, not padding, but margin. So we will remove that margin. So it's flush with this line. We have some alignment, a, a bit better of alignment with this line here. And then for the top wrapper, I'll just give it a margin of 140. So it goes down a bit better. Uh, the reason I'm adding that much margin is because the menu is fixed and we don't have a background color to the menu. So when the user gets to this spot, they have some space to see the menu a bit better. Uh, we could get around that either by you know making it fixed uh, or adding a background color to the menu. Uh, either way, I would want this to um, actually no, yeah. If there was a background color, we wouldn't need as much margin, but uh, it's all good. The design looks nice. So there we go. We have choose your adventure and range of activities. All right. So now uh, the next thing we're gonna do is add yeah this paragraph here. So go into the container, hit Command K. I'll add a paragraph, and I'll just call this S dash two for section two paragraph. And uh, for this, let's see, um, New Borgo Test 45, 14, yeah, a uh, size of 14 and a width of 60%. So we'll select it, give it a width of 60%, and we'll give it a color of white, and New Borgo Test 45, and that's it. So we have the paragraph. Let's check the spacing. The spacing looks pretty good, so I don't think I have to change that. Oh, one thing we forgot is this blue line here. So for the top wrapper, I added a bottom border um, and it's this color here. And uh, so we'll just select the top wrapper, go down to the bottom and add a bottom border of two pixels and give it this blue color. And bam. And then for the paragraph, we do wanna give it a margin of 20 pixels from the top. So it's not so close to that blue line. And boom, so far so good. So yeah, let's add the cards. Uh, the cards are pretty fun. So that's actually gonna be a slider. So I'll select the container, hit Command K, I'll add a slider and that looks good. And so we have uh, slide one, I'm just gonna call it uh, slide dash one, that looks good. And then I'm gonna add a div block inside of this slide. So I'm gonna hit Command K, add a div, and I'm gonna call this um, slide container, or slide, we'll say slide wrapper, okay? And then um, I'll set it to a position of absolute and full. So it fills the entire slide. And now I can add, um, I can set a display setting to this div block. The reason I'm adding a wrapper inside is because you can't add a dis you can't set a display setting to to a slide. You have to add a div block inside of the slide and then set the display setting. Um, the display setting of flex. So here I'll click flex, and I want it to be horizontal, aligned, stretch, and justify start. Perfect. So now I'll hit Command K, and let's see what I did here for the the uh, the cards. So we have the slide. Okay, so we have, um, yeah, so select the slide wrapper, add a div block, yeah, div block, and I'll select uh, slide, I'll call it slide card. And for this, I'll set the sizing to grow if possible, and I'll hit Command C to copy and paste three times. So we have three cards in there, and I'll give each card a background color. So we'll select this color here, and just copy it and give the card a background color. Boom, so we have that. 
and each card has a margin let's see here of 20 20 pixels all right so i'll go into the margin hold down alt and give it 20 pixel margin and it looks good and then i'll select the slider and remove that gray background color and perfect and also the slide card i think it has a specific height it does yep so the the height for the card is 600 pixels 600 pixels and looks good and so we have to set the mask or we can actually better yet maybe just make the slide 600 pixels yeah perfect there we go and uh yeah that looks good um i know the video is getting kind of long but uh we'll keep it moving so we do have some padding uh to the slide so let's go ahead and add that so we have a padding of yeah 60 from the bottom and the top and 40 from the left and the right okay looking good is that is that what i wanted to do yeah well we'll, we'll keep working with it um yeah and if we have to adjust some of this we will okay so we have the card now for the card we have um we have this image uh this text this text and this button so let's go ahead and add that so the first thing i'll do is hit command k or for the slide card let's give it a display setting of flex vertical um, align stretch and justify start so i'll hit command k add a div block and the image width and height is 300 by 400 so 300 by 400 and that seems a bit a bit tall but i think that's right and then this is so just working with it here um yeah let me give the card a height of 600 yeah that's better okay and then the slide so yeah i'm going to remove the the height from the slider and let me just reference what i did so it has a height of auto and the slide the slide itself is 600 okay so the slide 600 pixels there we go that looks like it makes more sense all right um and then the slider yeah that looks good okay so we have this div block it's uh 300 by 400 and actually let me set the flux to center for where, for the div block. And now uh, for this div block, I'm going to um, give it a background color and let me just call it uh, here. So what did I call this? Slider image and yeah, 300 by 400. Okay, so I'll call this slider image. Go to background, add a background image choose an image and we'll start with this one set it to cover and position it in the center and i don't need it to be tiled all right that feels a little bit big it does so it's saying here that's 300 by 400 so what am i missing hmm okay 300 by 400 okay um yeah maybe it is the same size all right we'll keep it moving if it feels like it's too big then we'll change it but that looks too big yeah all right so we have the slide card so now let's add the the heading here the h3 heading so <clears throat> i'll hit command k and add a heading and oh i see what what's going what happens okay all right we'll keep it moving so here i'll just style all the h3 headings give it the typography of alpha headline pro and uh let's see size of 32 and yeah so we'll go ahead and do that 
So we'll say 32 and we'll say one here for the, the height and we'll say normal for the font weight. So this is camping. Okay, looks good. Then I'll just copy this text and add a paragraph. So we'll just say yeah, paragraph and let's see, slide paragraph. Give it the class name slide paragraph. So at this point, I'm not gonna talk as much because um, as you can see, it's a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna align it to the center. Um, and this has a margin of 50 and font weight, uh, font size of 14. So let's say new book grotesque 45, color white 14, and we'll give it some margin from the left uh, to about 50. Okay, so that looks good. And the last thing we need to do is add a button. So I'll say button and I'll call this uh, wait, let's do that again. Hit Command K, add a button, and I'll call this uh, slide button. Okay, and I'll type in here, I'll say explore, all capital, and I kind of remember the fonts. Yeah, it's uh, New Bull Girl Test 65, and let's see here, so 18, uh, line, uh, size of 18 for the button and a background color, this one here. So yeah, we'll just give it the background color there and white looks good and 18. And is it new book grotesque? No, it's actually 65 new book grotesque. Oh, okay, so that's right. And it's not all capital, so explore, okay. And yeah, that's looking good. And it has a padding of 50 and 10. So we'll select the button, add a padding of 50 and 10. All right, so hit Command K. Um, yeah, so I'll just hit Command K and paste all of this in there and the other ones. Okay. So now let's see if I can make, um, okay, I got it, yeah. So I'm gonna give the the card a padding of 40. So this will make the image smaller. Yeah, exactly, that's exactly right. Okay, so because I added padding, the image moves up and looks good. And I'll add some margin here of 10 from the button. And I think that's it, so 10. And 10 so let's see so we'll add 10 and that's uh, yeah it looks good and 0 0 10 okay and 20 the button actually has 20 from the top and this has 0 and there we go so we have our cards and they look good Okay, and perfect. All right, so let's change the image here. So I'll just change this image. So for the slider image, I'll give it a combo class of two. Um, for the, I'll choose an image. I'll select this one here, select this image, choose an image, select this one. And perfect, so we have camping, sightseeing and hiking. And hiking. So I'm just adding lower ipsum text uh, because, yeah, just kind of as placeholder text. All right, the last thing we need to do for these cards is add um, a different color here at the bottom. So go into Webflow, uh, into the this one, and we'll just grab these colors. So it has a bottom border of 10 pixels, so I'll grab this first color, and we'll just say um, bottom border, solid, 10 pixels, and we'll give it this color. Then I'll go to the second card, give it a combo class of two, and I'll just copy this color and change the border color. 
Then I'll go into here and I'll copy this color and uh, yeah, change it to to that color. Or um, let's undo that. Give it a combo class of three for the third card and change it to that color. All right, so the last thing we need to do is add these numbers here in the upper left. So let's see that um, to do, okay. So for that, I'm going to select the card, hit Command K, add a div block, and, or not a div block, I wanna add a text block. So hit Command K, add a text block, and I'm gonna call this card number and I'm gonna position it uh, absolute in the upper left. And we'll just set, give it the number 0103 out of three, 01 03. Let's set the position of the card to relative so that this number is relative to the card. We'll get a, give it a top margin of 25 and a left margin of 25. Okay, then for the text, we're gonna set it to um, alpha headline pro and the color of white and let's see the size here the size is 32 so yeah that's good so we'll say 32 32 remove the unit and just say one for the line height and there's actually no space here between the 01 and the 03 uh, but if you notice here the 03 is smaller um, let me see here so is there a space? No, okay. So the o, the dash in the O3 is smaller. So um, let's see, so it's 16 pixels. So for this, we're going to select the O3 and wrap it in a span and call it um, uh, number uh, red, okay? And we'll set the size to 16 and we'll change the color to that red color. Okay, so I'll go in here, copy that, and just make it red. Okay, there we go. So we have the number, so now I can just copy this, paste it into each card, and just change the number to two out of three, one out of three, two out of three, and three out of three. And so far, so good. Yeah, I'm liking the way it's looking. Uh, we're gonna work with these arrows in a second. Um, or actually, yeah, let's add the uh, the scale animation. So the scale animation is fairly simple. Just select the slide card, this first one here, go to the hover state, and or actually before we do that, let's go down, let's go to the none state, go down to transitions or uh, transforms, click on these three dots and set the transform origin to the bottom uh, because if we go back to, to Cray, and we go to this section, we can see that it's scaling from the bottom, right? It looks like it's scaling from the center almost, but it's actually scaling from the bottom. All right, or at least that's how it looks, like it's scaling from the bottom. So yeah, we'll select a slide card, change the transform origin to the bottom, and uh, let's go to the states, go to hover, and on hover, we're going to add a transform we're gonna scale it, and we're gonna scale it 1.2. Okay, so it gets it gets quite a bit bigger. All right, and we are gonna to have to add some margin here to the slider, so it doesn't. Um, yeah, and so we, we'll have to mess with this in a second because, as as you can see, it's getting cut off. Uh, but yeah, give it a scale of 1.2, and let's go back to the none state, and for the transition. Uh, we'll add a new transition and we'll say for the transform, we'll set the transition to 250 milliseconds and we'll say ease out just to give it some nice easing. Okay, so now if I preview, we can see the card gets bigger. Looks good, it does get cut off, so we need to work with the slider here. Okay, uh, yeah, so the reason it's going beyond um, the slider there is because I gave it too much scale. Um, it's actually, the scale is 1.1, not 1.2. Okay, so yeah, that's a little better. We're st it's still getting clipped though, so let's see. 
yeah so let's go into the the slider and we'll apply yeah apply the um, the padding to the mask instead of the the slide okay so so instead of applying the padding to the slider we're applying it to the mask and I think yeah perfect so the mask um, because the slider is comprised of a mask with an overflow of hidden um, it uh, it clipped the card but now we added the padding to the mask instead of the slider so now the slide the mask is bigger and it doesn't clip the the card okay uh, we don't want to show the slide nav so down here I'm just gonna say none for the slide nav and yeah so it's looking good so we're gonna delete slide 2 and just hit command C and copy slide 1 okay now if I preview and I go we have slide 1 and slide 2 they all have cards um, we notice that we have this here on the left so we'll worry about that in a second I kind of want to keep it moving with this tutorial but basically it's just a matter of adding the right amount of um, margin I believe to these cards so let's see uh, 40 two, two. and the slide okay yeah so we just have to add some margin to the actual slide so I'll select slide 1 give it a margin of 60 there we go so now they're all nicely on their own slide Perfect, yay, we're done with section two. All right, the last section, uh, this tutorial is getting very long. I'm at uh, an hour and nine minutes, or I might edit some at, some of the beginning, but let's move on to section three. So we're at section three, and let's give it the background color um, so we don't see all those elements behind it. The background color is this dark blue, and I'll go ahead and add that dark blue. Oh, no, I added it to the mountains. Uh, yeah, we want to add it to section three. And boom. And make it relative. So there we go. Perfect. All right, so we have section three. Um, it has kind of the same top wrapper, so I'm just going to copy the top wrapper from section two and paste it in there or actually the container, excuse me. So I'll grab the container in section two, paste it, and then we can just delete the slider, uh, the slider in section three. Okay, so now we just have the top wrapper with the, uh, the text here and the header. And this one is browse our gallery, okay? So I just have to change some text, browse our gallery. And this is O2. This is browse our gallery. Bam, so we're done with that part in section three. So now we just have to add um, this slider background and the slide and this text, okay? So I'm gonna hit Command K, let me select the container. Hit Command K, add a div block. I'm gonna say slider BG for slider background. I'm gonna give this a width of 60% and I'm going to align it to the right, okay? And so the height is 500 and it's actually 80%, okay? So the height is 500, the width is 80%, the margin from the top is 80, Boom. And now we'll just uh, change the color here. So I'll grab this background color and we'll make it blue. Perfect. All right, so we have the slider background and now we want to add a wrapper here on the right. So how did I do that? Yeah, slider uh, right wrapper and this is 60%. Okay, I see what I did. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Command K, add a div block. This is gonna be the right wrapper. 
it's going to be a position of absolute full I'm going to give it some bottom and top margin of uh, 40 and yeah let me change the slider bg to a position of relative there we go so that this right wrapper is relative to the background i'm going to give it a width of 60 percent and i'm going to position it i'm going to give a display setting of flex to the slider bg and position it on the right or actually that didn't work so let me uh yeah, for the, the right wrapper, uh, rather than full, I'm gonna say right. Yeah, for absolute, gonna position it on the right. Okay, and I wanna give this, uh, this right wrapper a background color, and this will make sense in a second. So let me grab the background color, and just paste in there, and looks good. So it has a background color. And we wanna add all this content in here. So I might, just copy and paste this content um, so we can save a bit of time in this tutorial but I'll, I'll add this top header so uh, this top header let's go ahead and add that so hit command K well first let's select the right wrapper give it a display setting of flex left and uh, vertical yeah align stretch and justify start so I'll hit command K add a div block uh, call this s3 top uh, top wrapper and uh, give it a height of 100 pixels and the background color is this kind of lighter blue so we'll copy that and we'll paste it in there it looks good we'll give this a display setting of uh, flex and let's see yeah flex top and uh, justify even uh, distribute space so top and space between so for this is it an h3 that i used yeah h3 and kamchatka solitude so hit command k i'm gonna call this come oh wait uh give it a heading and i can just select uh h3 here and it'll change it to an h3 because we styled all the h3s that way kamchatka Solitude was that it? Yeah, I can check the solitude, and it's actually a bit different the the size. So we're going to go ahead and change that. I'm just going to say S3 H3 heading, and I'll go ahead and make it 28 for the size, and looks good. And then I'm going to add 2019. So I'll just um, hit command K add a text block it's in the right and I'll just say 2019 and I'll call this um, 2019 text all right and for this it's 22 size of 22 so just change the text there set it to white make it 22 all right and I think I can just say center. Yeah, there we go. I'll remove the uh, the zero there. Oops. Boom. Perfect. And I think this has some padding. No. Margin 40 and 80. Okay. So we'll give this a left margin of 40 and this a left margin of 80. Okay, so yeah, we're getting there. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this entire text wrapper because I wanna save some time for this tutorial and I'm just gonna paste it in there. And there we go. And the same with the button because we already did the button styling. Oh, this is actually a light box button, so I can't do that for this one. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and add that. So I'll hit Command K inside of the right wrapper, add a light box here. I'm gonna remove the image inside of that light box link and I'm gonna add a button uh, in the light box link. Let's see, did that work? Add a button. That's not working, so interesting. Should be adding the button in there. Okay, so 
we'll come back to it. Not sure why it's not letting me add the button, but uh, but yeah. So we'll come back to this light box link. Let's add the slider. Uh, we're almost done with the tutorial. Uh, let's go ahead and add, yeah, the slider. I might explain what I did for, for the last bit of the slider, um, but yeah, we'll add it really quick. Uh, so in the right wrapper, um, I wanna add the slider. So I'm gonna hit Command K and add a slider. Give it a position of absolute and full. And set the height to 100%. Okay, so the slider right now is at the top. And I'm going to call it S3 slider for section 3 slider. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to end up setting the slider behind the um, the content, right? So um, so we have the right wrapper. Oh, and I, I think I missed a step. Uh, yeah, I did miss a, a, a step here. So let me uh, just remove the slider. So we have the right wrapper, okay, slider, and yeah, I'm gonna hide the slider for a second. So this, all this content needs to be in, in another div block. I'm gonna say, add another div block in the right wrapper, and I'm gonna call this um, S3 content wrapper. And I'm gonna say position of absolute and full. And then I'm gonna place all that text and this top wrapper inside of that content wrapper and this light box link. Okay, and then I'll bring back the slider. So this will make sense in a second as to why I'm doing this, but I'll bring back the slider and perfect. So with the slider, uh, we're gonna have it move to the left and let me add a, an image. There's gonna be three slides, so I'll just call this S3 slide. And um, I'll just add a background image to the slide. Uh, choose image, oh, yeah, choose image, it's this one here. Uh, this one I set a custom width and height, actually, I think it was like 120%. Um, yeah, that's fine. And top, yeah, position at the top, and I don't need it to be tiled. I don't, want, I don't want to show the slide now, so I'll just hide it. And yeah, so we have the slide at the top, and we have three slides, so I'll just copy there. Oh, we do want the slide nav. Let me bring that back in. We do want the slide nav, but we want it in the lower left. So I'm going to just select bottom left here. And I want them to be squared. So I'm going to uncheck rounded and just give it some margin, maybe like 40 from the left. And boom. So we have the, those four little squares there. So what we're going to do is yeah, actually, let me, um, one last thing. We're gonna place, we're gonna style this uh, this right arrow. So for the left arrow, we're gonna hide it. We don't need a left arrow, but I'll select the right arrow and I'll position it in the top left, give it a width and height of 100 by 100. And uh, yeah, that's all I need to do there. Um, and let me go in here and select the the arrow, if I can find it so that we can style it. Slider, slider, content. Where's the arrow? Where is it? Slider, paragraph. Huh. It's somewhere in here, but I can't seem to find it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just keep it moving. Uh, but yeah, we want to give the uh, this arrow, um, the right arrow here a background color of blue and a left border. Is it a left border? Let's see. Yeah, left border of red. Mm -hmm. So we'll grab it. We'll give it a left border, 10 pixels, and it's going to be, uh, I think, this red color. Select the card. Yeah, this color here. We'll just select it and make it. Nope, not that color. There we go. And boom. All right, so that's going to be our our arrow. Uh, yeah. So that's looking okay. 
and I do want this right arrow to be behind the slider. So I'm going to give it a Z index of zero. So now it's behind the slider. And with the interactions, we're going to, we're actually gonna move this, um, this slider negative 100% like that. Okay, so let's do that. Um, yeah, we can add the interaction. And also for the slider, I want it to be behind the content wrapper. So I'm just gonna move it above the content wrapper and set the content wrapper to give it a Z index of like 10. So it comes in front and right. And we also need to give it um, this background color to the content wrapper. Oops, there we go. So now we can't see the slide at all, but we're gonna have it come in from the right to the left with interactions. So let's add the interaction because this video is getting a bit on the longer side. So um, when section three comes in, I want the slide to slide to come from the right to the left. So I'll select section three, go into interactions, um, select element trigger. When section three comes in, when it scrolls into view, we're going to, when scroll into view, we're going to start an animation. Gonna add a new timed animation, and I'm gonna say slide, uh, S3 slide, slide in. Okay, and I'll click the plus, and I'll select the slider, S3 slider, and I'll say move, move negative 100%, and we'll give it an easing of, let's say ease and out, and then I want to select the the right arrow and I want to move that negative 100% as well and we'll say ease and out as well so we'll move them together and I'll add a delay to the arrow so I'll say 0.5 okay so let's see how that looks so I'm scrolling we'll start at the top so I'm scrolling and it comes in so it comes in too fast so for the slide in we're going to set an offset of 50% so when we get to the middle of the third section, the slide will come in. So let's start from the top. I come in and boom. So it's it's a bit fast. So when the slider comes in, I'm gonna set it to one second and delay of 0.5 is okay. And one second for that. Yeah, let's see how that looks. Do, do, do. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll, I'll leave it like that. So um, yeah because this video is getting a bit long. Uh, but yeah, so the slider works and I can go through, go through the different slides, perfect. Um, yeah, so the other thing I want to do is, oh yeah, set the slide out animation. So slide in, um, when scrolled out of view, we're gonna start an animation. We're gonna duplicate the slide in and we're just gonna we're gonna have it disappear kind of fast. So I'll set it to 0 .5, uh, 0.5 for both these and not add a delay. So they just kind of go back in pretty quick. Um, and I'll just set it to back to 0% and back to 0%. Okay, so slide out, slide in comes into view, slide out, it goes out of view. You don't see it go out of view, but it happens pretty quick. So that when the user scrolls back, the animation occurs again. Okay. So I'm not gonna showcase it in this tutorial, but one thing I did, and maybe should I showcase it? Yeah, why not, why not? The video's already long enough, so let's go ahead and do it. Um, let's change this content on a slide, and yeah, let's see if we can add the button now to the slide, to the slide box. I, I'm not sure why it's not letting me do it. Let me delete it, and uh, let me add a light box. And we'll delete the image, add a button. Hmm, interesting. I, oh, that's right, I can't add a, a link inside a link. Okay, the button is a link. I got it, so no worries there. Um, it's actually doing what it's supposed to. So for the Lightbox link, um, yeah, we'll just dial it. We'll just, um, let's see. The, uh, we just had some text, so 
you know what, I'm just gonna grab this text and paste it. I'm gonna do a lot of copying and pasting now because uh, in the interest of, of saving time. So let me uh, just remove the underline, uh, give it a background color of that red to the light box link, we'll say red, and we'll say, uh, yeah, light box link. We'll give it that background color, perfect. Explore photo and a margin of, what is it, 40? Yep, looks good. And uh, we'll, we'll link this light box link to this image. And bam, so now, yeah, we scroll to that section, comes in, click explore photo, turns into a light box. Boom. Okay, so we do want to change the content when the slide changes. So uh, to do that, we just select slide one and actually, uh, let's see here. Yeah, we need to copy the content wrapper two more times. So I'll hit Command, Command C to copy, and then Command V to paste. So we have it three times there. And they're on top of each other, so it only looks like one, so that's fine. So on slide three, uh, on this first slide, we'll select it, and when we'll add a new interaction, and element trigger, so when the slider changes, we're going to start an animation, and we'll call this, um, We'll add a new time to animation. We'll say S1 slide in. So I'll select the content wrapper. And initially I wanted to have an opacity of 0%. And then I'm gonna select hide show and set it to a display setting of uh, block. And then I'm gonna set the opacity back to 100%. And we'll say, uh, we'll say ease out for the opacity. Uh, yeah, for the opacity animation. Uh, so what, what's happening, yeah, it initially starts at 0%, uh, then it comes in, and then the opacity comes to 100. Um, the reason we're doing a hide show is because, so we'll, we'll say slide in view. We'll close this, and then on slide out view, we'll start an animation. I'll duplicate the slide in view, and we'll select it, and I'll say slide out view. And for this, we're just going to set the opacity to... Uh, yeah, we'll uh, back to 0%, and then for hide show, we'll set, set the display setting to none. So for this first one, we want to set the initial state, yeah, the opacity to 0% for the initial state. So what's going to happen is, yeah, let me go back in here. So we see this, uh, it fades out, and um, we don't see it. So let me continue so this makes a bit more sense. Uh, if, you're, if you've gotten this far in the tutorial, um, congrats, this is super long. Uh, but yeah, let me select slide two. Let me add a um, slider change, uh, start animation. I'm gonna duplicate the, the S1 and uh, just say S, S2 slide, no S, yeah, slide two, slide in view. And actually, so it's less confusing, I'm gonna say slide two no, S3 slide 2 in view. And I'm just going to right click, change target, and select the second content wrapper. And also, I don't want to affect the class, I want to affect the selected element for all of these. Okay, so right click, change target, select that one. Right click, change target, select that one. Right click, change target, select the second one. Okay, and make sure it's selected element and not class and then slide out of view. Uh, no, start an animation. I'll duplicate this one uh, there, and we'll say out view. And for this, yeah, we'll just delete this last one and remove the initial state. All right, cool. So let's see if it's working. Um, okay. So we might, we might have to work with it. If it doesn't work, um, hopefully you just grab the concept that I'm doing here. I'm moving a bit quick now because yeah, it's kind of longer. So now we go to slide three, slider change, start an animation. I'll duplicate this one, the S3 slide. No, that's not the one I want. The, the end view, duplicate. And we'll just say slide three, end view. And we'll just right click, change target, change it to this one. Right click, change target, 
right click, change target, and bam. Select that element, boom. There's probably an easier way like of, with affecting the class, the children of the class. Um, or actually no, because they're not inside. Okay, never mind. All right, boom. So start an animation, slide three in view, duplicate that, and just say slide three out view. And we'll remove the initial state, so it goes back to 0%. And then we'll hide it and delete this one here. All right, boom. So let me select slide two, because I think we, we have to, um, yeah, change that there. Okay. I think we've got it. Uh, hopefully you followed along. Again, I'm moving a bit quick uh, here. So boom, boom, looks good. And we'll just change the name. Um, S3 slide one in view. And then here, S3 slide one out view, okay. And then we'll say none, that looks good, and selected element. Okay, so this should work, fingers crossed. So we scroll down to the slide, and yeah, it's working perfectly. Um, and I'll show that it's working perfectly by, um, here, let me do this really quick. Um, I'll just set, set this to one. We'll do like this, and we'll say, uh, sightseeing, sight seeing for that one, and then we'll say two and none, and then we'll select the third one and we'll say camping or hiking. We'll say hiking. Okay. So let's bring this one back in. And this one back in, okay. So now if I preview, hiking, Kamchatka. Okay, so something didn't quite work here. Uh, so we have, that's one. So let's hide one. Let's hide three. Oh. Uh, yeah, let me make this three hide that and this one okay so yeah let's set this to uh, sightseeing okay cool all right I'm just adding combo classes so that we can hide and show specific um, specific ones all right so we have hiking Kamchatka sightseeing all right so you could change all the content for each of those content wrappers and it would change which with each slide and if we click we have the photo. All right, so wow, I can't believe I showed that. That was, um, took a moment, but yeah, we're just about done. Uh, for the footer, I'm just gonna copy and paste because yeah, this video is super long. So I'm just gonna copy it. All I did with the footer, I'll just explain it really quick. Um, so I'll go in here, go into the body and just paste it in there and yeah, I think that's it. Why is there that space there? Uh, to do, let's see, section three. Doesn't have any padding. Footer is a hundred. Uh, yeah, the container. Section three. All right, yeah. Um, let me add some padding, I guess. Not sure why that space is there, but unless I added it to section three, which is probably what I did. Footer, is it the footer in section three? It is, okay. So the footer, instead of placing it in the body, we're going to going to place it in the section. Bam. Yeah, there we go. So it's in the container and actually that's right. I want it to be in the container. 
Uh, but yeah, there we go. So we have the footer at the bottom. For these icons, I did use the font awesome icon set. I don't really recommend using it for web projects, but they, it's easily uh, it's easy to add the social media icons. Basically, you just install the font awesome icon set, and then you go to font awesome. And let's say I want like dribble. You know, I just copy, grab dribble, uh, copy the Unicode glyph in here. And I just, you know, this is a text block, so I just paste it in there. And then I give it the, um, the font FA brands for font awesome brands. And we have those icons and I just use margin to space it and Flexbox. Um, I added a footer wrapper and used uh, justify space between to add the text here, the social media wrapper with the icons. And this is a form with the submit button and join our mailing list here at the bottom. So it's just a form. Um, if you really want me to cover that, let me know. But I am just kind of um, getting a bit, not tired, but it's, it's a longer one. So uh, yeah, almost two hours. But yeah, that's uh, how we built this or how I built this in Webflow. There are little details that, um, oh yeah, this is the one here. Um, yeah, this is how we built it in Webflow. There's little details that I didn't quite cover. Basically, yeah, like this text here on the left. Um, oh, and yeah, let's let's change these arrows too, because um, that's a fun little technique that, that I want to show. Um, so for the arrow, uh, I'm just going to hide this icon here. So I'm going to say display setting of none. In the left arrow, I'm going to add a div block. And uh, let's set the position. Uh, yeah, let me add this div block inside of the left arrow. And uh, yeah, for this div block, I'm going to say left arrow icon. And width and height of, let's say, 20 by 20. It might be a bit bigger. But basically, we're just going to use that border technique where we add a bottom and top border of 10 and 10. And for a left arrow, we're going to add a right, a right border of 10. We're going to make it white and the bottom and top border are transparent. There we go. And let's make it 15. So it's a bit bigger. Okay. And for the left arrow, I'll give it a display setting of flex and justify center and align center or align left. So it goes a little bit further to the left and we'll do the same with the right icon. So we'll just say display setting of none. And yeah, hit command K, add a div block. Um, and actually what I can do is just copy uh, this left arrow, paste it in here. And uh, let's see, right arrow. Yeah. And um, I'll just duplicate this class, call it right arrow icon. And instead of the left, We'll just add 15 to the right and set it to white. Okay, and then the right arrow, give, give it a display setting of flex, center, and right. Boom. Pretty easy. Uh, the spacing isn't the same here, so I might change that a little bit. Maybe do like this, or center. I would play with these arrows so that they look even on the left and the right. And that looks pretty good. Perfect. And then for this one too, uh, we need to change that icon because it's pointing to the left. So I'm just going to grab the um, the right arrow and uh, it's going to move it temporarily, going to move it up negative 100 pixels so we can work with it. I'm going to set this icon display setting of none, hit command K, add a div block and uh, set the position, yeah, add this div block inside the right arrow. The right arrow, I'm gonna give it a display setting of center, center. And for this, I'll give it a width and height of 15 by 15. That's too small, maybe uh, 25 by 25. And yeah, we'll give it a top border of 10, bottom border of 10, and a left border of 10 and bottom and top are transparent. And the left is white. And actually, 
the right we want the right side there we go and 15 There we go, 15, okay. And we'll make it uh, white. Boom. Uh, yeah, it looks okay. Actually 15 by 15. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, we can move it a little. No, that looks kind of, maybe 10 by 10. Or right, yeah, 10, 10, and 10. Okay, that looks nice. Maybe a little bit small, but we'll work with it. Cool, so now I can select the right arrow and remove that transform. So yeah, we just uh, go in and it has, so it's just for consistency purposes because um, we want the arrows to look the same throughout the site. Boom, uh, looks good. I was gonna add a hover state to this. We're gonna skip that. I'll add a hover state to the login um, so let's do that really quick. Select the login, select hover. We're gonna set the background color to white and the font color, we're going to set it to this kind of red, dark red. Um, so yeah, hover and red, okay. Then we'll go back to the normal state, to the none state, and we'll give it a transition and we'll say, We'll just say all properties because we're affecting the background color. And the the uh, the text color, so I preview. Cool, we have this nice hover state to the button. All right, and you do want to apply the transition speed uh, on the none state, not the hover state. Uh, just a little tip there. All right, so I think we're done. Um, that is the website. Uh, it looks good. Um, I did change the background color of this light box. I actually used uh, some custom code for that. So let's, I used this little piece of code to change the, the backdrop color of the light box so it matches the color of the site. Uh, so we'll go in here, add some custom code. Oh, it's already in there, cool. Because I duplicated it, yeah. And also for the body, the entire body, um, I changed the background color here, let me grab it here in the reference. Uh, I changed the background color to this darker, darker background color. Um, just in case there's any gaps somewhere within the site, there isn't, as I checked. But in any case, we can make the, the body that background color so there's not like this weird white space if there's any spacing in the site. All right, so I think I'm done with adding all the elements. Now I can preview. And as I scroll, and let me zoom in a bit here into the browser so it's a bit bigger. So as I scroll, it looks good. We have our nice website. Oh, let me make it there. And bam. We can go through the slide, content changes, and it's blue. As you can see, it's blue. And Webflow is not blue because it, does, it doesn't apply the custom code right away. But uh, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this build. Um, let me see if there's anything else I wanna do really quick. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll just add this text here uh, to the left side um, just to really finish off the site. So I'll just hit Command C to copy this ROA text um, because if we look at the dribble, um, we have this little text here on the left. So all, all you have to do for that is uh, select the container or copy this text and I'll select the container and I'll hit Command V to paste. Uh, let's see, where did it paste? Uh, let go, let's go in here. Yeah, ROA text, it's here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna say, call it, give it a combo class of left, give it a position of absolute and place it in the top left. Okay, so we can see it's right up here and I can actually place it in the top wrapper. So. Uh, let's put it in the top wrapper, perfect. So we can see it's in the top wrapper because it's to the left of this heading. So all I have to do here is give it a transform. So I'll say plus 
and we'll say move uh, rotate we're going to rotate it negative 90 degrees so it becomes vertical and I'll add another transform I'll say move and we'll just move it to the left maybe 150 pixels I go to 150 and just so I can see it we'll move it down move it down about let's say 60 pixels okay and then I'll move it uh, maybe negative 100 150 negative 150 pixels all right and then obviously I'll make the font smaller maybe 12 let's just see yeah 12 looks good okay so that's it and now I preview we can see that little bit of text there it's a little bit too down so we'll move it on the Y we'll move it back up maybe 50 or 40 yeah 40 looks good and I'll say negative 150 bam and then we'll just uh, select that text again ROA text right here and we'll go to section 3 the top wrapper and paste okay so ROA text let's move it back for a second we just want to change some of the text in here so this is going to be uh, 02 and this is going to be browse our gallery cool and let's move it back to negative 150 all right so we just added that little detail i uh, don't know if it was necessary but just to be thorough with this tutorial I wanted to show it. Okay, I'll preview. All right, so I scroll. We have that nice parallax effect at the top. The text goes behind. We have this section here. Looks great. It's a slider. Boom. These are buttons so the user can click. You can link it out to something. Uh, to link buttons and links, you just um, select them and then go into the element settings, this little gear icon, and type in your URL here. You can link it to a URL, a page, a section, email, telephone number, or an attachment. All right, cool, so let's keep it, keep it moving. Let me make it full screen just for fun. Yeah, there we go. Then we go down here, the slider comes in, and we can change the slide, and we can see the photo larger. And we can join a mailing list and click submit to join the mailing list. And you can link these out to, these were placed in link blocks, so you could link them out as well to the different social media. Cool, and the design is by Studio VOR. Perfect. All right, so I can't believe I got through that entire tutorial. Uh, hopefully you picked up some tips. Um, definitely leave comments in the section, uh, the, I can't even think now, in the, uh, the section below. Uh, if you want any questions answered, if something wasn't clear, I know I moved quick, but you know, this was a lot of content to cover. So yeah, let's quickly look at the, uh, the gift, the, uh, gift scrubber. And I think we did pretty, pretty good. It looks very similar to this animation here. So I think, uh, studio VOR did this in after effects and, uh, you know, I can play it and there we go. Oh, one thing we didn't do was add <clears throat> add a shadow to the cards. So last thing, I promise, this will be the last thing. Um, so let's add a shadow to the cards. Um, and let me just look at what the shadow is here. Um, so if I grab the card, so it has a shadow, 10, 28, and yeah, three, okay. So let's go into the, this will be really quick. So we'll just select the slide card, go into the styles, um, add a box shadow and we'll say 10 for the distance 20 for the blur and 8 for the size and then for the color we'll set the alpha to 30 percent so it's a bit um, not as uh, as dark and that's it <clears throat> we just needed to add that shadow really quick and I think I covered pretty much everything uh, there so we scroll we have the cards the cards now have that nice shadow and looks good okay cool and the slider all right there we go so we did everything pretty much 
All right, cool. Yeah, so that's it for the tutorial. I'm not gonna cover anything else. Um, I think that is good for the tutorial. Bam. So yeah, uh, it was by uh, Studio VOR. This is their Dribble page. I'll leave a link in the description area below. Uh, shout outs to Zach again for, for sending the assets. Um, you know, it is possible to build these types of designs in Webflow as you just saw. And uh, it does take a moment. Um, the first build took me a couple of days uh, just to work out the kinks. As you could see, as I was building this, I still had things to kind of work out and figure out and things like that. But uh, I was pretty happy with the end result. And uh, yeah, Webflow is super powerful. It includes pretty much all the tools you need to build a really beautiful website uh, without code. And you can even add custom code if you want to add like these really cool scripts inside of it. But I did pretty much everything uh, except change the background of the light box all without code. It was all within Webflow. The animations, interactions, the parallax effect, the scaling, the slider, that was all done within Webflow. Uh, yeah, so thanks for sticking through the tutorial. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, hopefully I can do more of these and uh, yeah, and just show off these really beautiful designs from Studio VOR and show off the power of Webflow. Uh, there are links in the description area below to, to things like uh, Learn UI uh, Design. It's, uh, it's by Eric Kennedy. Uh, I myself am taking this course. I'm on section five out of six. It is one of the best courses I've ever taken on learning UI design. If you're a web designer or web developer, uh, definitely take this class. Uh, if you're not uh, experienced with UI design and things like that, because he covers everything from typography, color, elements, and process. And it's made me such a better designer, like a thousand times better. I highly recommend this course. So there's a link in the description area below. Um, I do get a commission if you do purchase the course through me, but I wouldn't recommend it if um, if I hadn't learned so much from the course already or hadn't experienced the course myself. Um, also Webflow, uh, obviously, there's a link to Webflow in the description area below if you hadn't heard of Webflow. Super amazing program, as you just saw. It allows you to design, build, and launch responsive websites all without writing code. Super awesome. There's also the Webflow University. Uh, so if you're new to Webflow or you, ha you haven't seen it, or this is the, your first time seeing it, um, they have probably the best tutorials on using a program that I've ever seen. They help you get started with the basics and you'll be building websites in no time. It's super awesome, great tutorials. Um, yeah, and then Envato Elements, if you want some really awesome assets, elements.envato, there's a link in the description area below. Uh, just super great assets and webdevforyou.com, which is my personal website where I currently have 135 interactions that you can clone for free. Um, these are all free. You can clone into your Webflow project. Uh, they're just like really nice animations um, that you can add. It saves you some time and you can just copy, clone them into your own project. Uh, so that's web dev for you. I do have templates as well. So if you want to get started, uh, with a template to help you build faster. I do have a couple templates in the shop um, in, on my website and in the Webflow Marketplace. And there's a few other templates coming out soon as well. There's other resources on my website here to some great Webflow resources, uh, tutorials to my YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel and things, things like that. All right, so yeah, I'll end it like that. Um, yeah, and you can join the Slack community, the Web Dev for You Slack community to kind of talk with me and uh, get help with the interactions and just talk about Webflow. Okay, so I think I'm done. Thanks for listening. Uh, super long tutorial, super happy to, to have shown this. Um, yeah, Webflow recently added the navigator here on the left, so that's really cool. So you can see the structure of the site as I'm building or as you're building uh, as well. All right, so no more, I'm gonna end it there. Uh, thanks again to Zach Studio VOR. Uh, check, up, check back for more tutorials uh, soon. I'll be adding more tutorials. Um, also in the last video, I said I was gonna be coming out with like a Patreon membership. That's no longer the, co uh, the case. I'm gonna be creating a course that uh, that's really in depth from like beginning to end. And that'll be in a few months, that'll be available. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll be, I'll be creating more tutorials like this. And yeah, just uh, providing cool content uh, for Webflow and, and things like that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks everyone. I appreciate you. If you watched the whole tutorial, congratulations. 
And yeah, I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.